earlier on the channel, I showed you this rifle and you guys had one big ask and the answer is right here. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. That's right, the Bergara B14 squared crest in 308 is an ultimate reloader team favorite. This rifle has a lightweight carbon fiber monocoque stock. It's got a chromoly steel fluted barrel. It comes with a muzzle brake, detachable box magazine. This takes a lot of the boxes that I have requirements for when I'm looking for a hunting rifle. But when we did the launch story, you guys said, hey, what about this rifle in seven millimeter PRC? Well, that day has come and that's what we've got in this box. I am so excited to get hands on with this rifle. That's right, this is the B14 squared crest in seven PRC. This is a long action. In fact, other than the Bergara that I built in seven PRC, I think this is my first, this is my first factory Bergara in a long action. We've got a single stack mag. We've got length of pull spacers here. We've got our Kind of owner's manual materials here. This is going to be good. We've even got a thread protector. Bergara thinks of kind of all of the essential details. So, you guys asked for it. Here it is. I think this is looking pretty good here. Okay. Check that out. This brings the power and the long range ballistics to the next level. Okay, so I took a minute to clean everything up. This is everything that comes with the rifle. And if you want the full lowdown on the B14 squared crest, you're gonna wanna check out that launch video that I did for the 308 model. Let me do just a really quick review here. So, 4140 chromoly barrel. We've got sniper gray Cerakote, really attractive looking package. 100% carbon fiber uh, with carbon spine, really interesting technology. I'll go into that in a little bit more in detail in just a moment here. Initial calibers were 308 win, 65 Creedmoor, 65 PRC, 300 win mag. They added seven PRC, this is a huge deal. And for that most up-to-date list of calibers and cartridges, go to the Bergara B14 squared product page, which I will link to. If you click on that first link in the description, we'll have that, of course, in the article like we always do. The chromoly fluted barrel is interesting because it gives you an alternative to the carbon fiber wrapped barrels that have become so popular. Goes down to personal preference. If you like the carbon wrapped barrel uh, for its properties, that's a great option. If you want something that isn't as light, but is lighter than a heavier contour, non-fluted barrel, this is a great option. We've got the 5824 threaded muzzle, we've got the radio brake, so we can slap a Silencer Central Banish 30 suppressor on this and be good to go. Or actually the new Backcountry as well, that's one that we've been using quite a bit on hunting rifles and other shooting stories, like even on Shorty, our, our real short barreled 308. AICS five round magazine, single stack. Uh, for the base model, 6.8 pounds weight. Of course, we're gonna have to pick an optic. We're gonna take it shooting. We're gonna compare it to our 308 model. This is gonna be fun. So I just got back from quite a few exercises in the field with this rifle. This thing is a hammer. I absolutely love this thing for the whole big game hunting scenario. It's not heavy. It handles really well. I love this scope. It's a little bit of overkill for you guys that want to go real lightweight, uh, but that's not my goal with the Magnum rifle. A 7 PRC, I like to be somewhere in the middle and with a lighter stock, like this carbon stock on the crest, you can go a little bit heavier with your optic and really find that sweet spot. At least that's what I want to do. You could definitely go a lot lighter on the overall package. So we started with the factory radial brake and I was using the new Ultradyne launch pad to get a zero at 100 yards, which was really cool. You put a bunch of weight on it. It's got an Arca clamp on it. We had installed this Arca rail here from Salmon River Solutions and it pretty much mitigates almost all of the recoil. So that allowed us to get onto target quick. 
Then I went and I did some hand loading. I don't believe it or not, I don't have a lot of 7PRC ammo around. I have zero factory ammo right now. And I had recalled for my two builds that I've done, the longer 28 inch barrel config on the bat platform and the uh, shorter barrel config, the 22 inch barrel config that I did on uh, Bergara Premier Action. Uh, the 180s do really well, the 180 grain ELDM bullets from Hornady. So I looked at uh, the low data on Hodgson's website. This time I decided to go with H1000. Last time I used Rotumbo uh, for the 7PRC. And I did a fairly mild load at 60 grains of H1000 behind the Hornady 180 grain ELDM. Here's where things get crazy. I screwed on the Banish 30 from Silencer Central. I've got the seven inch config going here. You can also extend it to a nine inch config for a little bit more recoil reduction and a little bit more sound reduction. This being a hunting rifle, I thought let's go with the seven inch config. I've got my lightweight double pull sky pod from MDT here for some support, a game changer bag. I went out back and I shot two three shot groups to see where this rifle was gonna be at and to adjust zero for the Banish 30. Check this out just over a half inch. The first group measured 0.562 inches, this is at 100 yards, and the second group 0.569. These are back-to-back -back three shot groups as a part of the side in I came up a couple clicks from here and decided I was good. Funny thing about this is I went back to about a year ago when I published the launch story for the Crest that was with this 308 version of the rifle right here, my three shot group that I shot during the break-in uh, measured 0 0.570, I think it was. So the Crest is a hammer and it's also very consistent in my personal experience. Uh, for that story, we put the Crest on the trigger scan and we got this very nice result here. This is a really good trigger for out-of-box hunting situations. This came in at about 1.6 pounds pull required to, to break the trigger and it's very, very smooth. I would hunt with this. And that says a lot because I like my nice triggers and I like my light triggers, but this one is very, very clean break. Easy to see what's happening through the scope. Okay, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty excited at this point. This is how, for a Magnum rifle, a relatively lightweight, really lightweight Magnum rifle actually in, in, in my book to get this kind of performance increases my confidence level. And so what we decided to do was to go up to the ultimate reloader ridge line range and see how this was gonna do at 700 yards. I'll let you see three shots in a row here. <laughs> I tell you what, if that was an animal, we would be hammering its vitals. So our first shot was a little bit low and there's a story behind that. When I did my zero on this, I didn't fully lift the cap up and I heard some clicking before I cinched it down and I thought, you know, it's possible that I just negated, negated my, my come up on that and it turns out that that was true because I shot right under the target, just barely on the first shot and then I had three subsequent in a row shots landing squarely on that 706 yard gong. This gong happens to be smaller than elk vitals and we didn't have a whole lot of side wind. I was holding dead center after I came up, you know, a little bit and that kind of performance is super inspiring. It makes me feel like, wow, if that was an elk standing there at 706 yards, it would be, it would be absolutely down. Uh, did a little bit of positional shooting as well off of a log. I'll show you what happened there. Again, a really clean trigger break. I built a pretty stable but realistic hunting position off of that log. Absolute confidence. 
I also shot the rifle offhand and found this is the thing I don't understand why with 7PRC. The recoil with the right rifle and the right setup just does not seem to be an issue like you would think it would be coming from a 300 PRC or even a 300 Win Mag, that kind of thing. In fact, we collected some data. This rifle is set up a little bit more heavy than the other crests that we have in 308. We put it on the recoil rig and believe it or not, the recoil signatures between these two rifles, 308 and 7 PRC, were almost identical. I can't explain exactly why that would be the case, uh, but it's just evidence that this platform, it shoots really well and it is absolutely not going to beat you up. So at the end of the day, this package I think is hotness. I love the detachable box magazine. You know, you're going to load this up five rounds. You've got it in the truck. Uh, you see an animal, you get out of the truck, set up, pop it in, boom, done. And it's safe in transport in the meantime. I am a huge, huge fan of the detachable box magazine for hunting. It's the only way that I like to roll if I have the capability to do that. You've got all the standard features on the crest, the things that Bergar gives you, like the external bolt stop. This one has the chromoly barrel with the fluting, kind of an interesting alternative to carbon. And QD cups for your sling, and all in a really attractive package. Very, very enthusiastic about 7PRC, and specifically this rifle as well. So that concludes our initial overview of this rifle, and you can expect to see it in subsequent stores. Here's what I would like to know is, what do you think of the Bergara B14 squared crest? Do you want one? Do you have one? What do you think of the 7PRC model? This was the number one piece of feedback from our original story. You said, launch it in 7PRC and I'm gonna buy one. Are you going to? Answers to any of those questions, drop a comment and we'll continue that discussion. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.